Hello guys, welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you how to use Visual Studio Code for debugging C++ programs. I will go over several uh, topics. First one, how to do debugging using the plain vanilla G++ and GDB. Then I will tell you how to set up your Visual Studio Code for debugging with Bazel, which is a system for building C++ files. And then I will quickly overview um, how to use breakpoints, conditional breakpoints, functional breakpoints, how to use variable watch, and how to use call stack for your debugging. Now, in order for debugging, um, enable debugging here, there's one extension that uh, you guys should install, uh, and that's called code LLDB. So install this. It's called a native debugger based on LLDB. And uh, this should work on Mac, Windows, and Linux. What I'm showing here is on Mac, so hopefully it should also work for you if you have other machines. Um, but it's supposed to work in everything. And uh, once you install this, uh, then you can go and start your debugging without any problems. So let's see. So here you go, click on this window, um, this icon to get your debugging uh, windows, uh, you have variables here, you have watch, you have call stack, and you should have breakpoints. Now, um, the other thing that you can choose here is that what configuration that you want to uh, set for debugging. So this one, uh, check code LLDB. All right, so if you just want to compile a simple C++ file with no make file, no build file, no bazel, just a simple C++ file that has uh, your function definitions, your uh, class definition, and a main file. Basically, it's Hello World-like program. You can use this uh, template and download it from my GitHub. I will put the address in the video description. So once you clone this, uh, you get this file, and then you can compile this using your G++. Dash G will enable um, the executable that gets created after compilation to include the symbols for uh, debugging. Uh, this basically enables the C++11 features, uh, the name of the file, and then the output. Um, this is the executable file which gets created after compilation. So once I run this, uh, the file gets compiled, and then I get this executable file, fib, that is created out of fib.cpp. Now, rather than compiling this, every time using the command line, you can also use, um, just hit F5, and the same thing will, ha will happen, and then you get to debug it. Now, before I go in uh, to explain how to debug this, uh, the way that F5 is set, F5 key is set up when you uh, push it to compile this, is described in this file called um, tasks.json. So tasks.json is inside your folder. Once you clone it from my GitHub, you get this file here. It's one of the standard uh, uh, files that come with Visual Studio Code. You can read for, uh, about it more in the uh, documentation of Visual Studio Code. Right. So in order to debug this, I can set up breakpoints. In order to set a breakpoint, you can just hover over a line, stay next to it, and just click. And this red button here means now you set up a breakpoint here. You should also see it here, um, fib.cpp line 34. Now we have a breakpoint, which matches line 34 here. All right, so now as soon as I push F5, I should see the execution starting, and I stop next to line 34, next to my breakpoint. I have several options here to continue the execution um, using F5 again, or just execute one line, step over. This is step into, so if this was a call on a function call, this would bring the execution inside the function call, and this is if this was inside the function, this takes you out of the, fun uh, the function call. And this one just restarts the execu execution. So I can just push this here again, and then it restarts and come back to this point. And this would be stopping. All right, so now as I stop here at this line, uh, let's execute this a few more lines. Uh, so line one, line two, and then so r is equal to fib of 10. At this point, r should have a value. As you can see, if you just hover here, you see the value of r, and now we can print it. The result of the print would be inside your debug console on your terminal, uh, r is equal to 55 here. And uh, on the left, you should be able to see all the variables that are currently in scope, so s, and so V is your uh, vector. You can see all of its elements. S is an object of solution. Inside it has a 
map and then the variable r that we just calculated the fibonacci of 10 that has value of 55 j is still zero because we haven't assigned to it so as soon as i run this using this uh, icon here i should see the value of j to be non-zero 144 now the watch window is where you can uh, customize what you can uh, focus on so for example if I just want to see the uh, um, one of these variables you can just put it here and focus on this one or you can put expressions of what you want to see a function of all the variables that are in scope for example again uh, if I want to see something like v1 v4 multiplied by v5 I can see this expression for you um, I want to go over a couple of files that come with this uh, template so as I mentioned there's this .vs code it has launch.json and task.json these are two important files that Visual Studio Code uses let's look at task.json first so in task.json you can basically ask Visual Studio to run something for you automatically and call it a task basically for example uh, we create a task called build active file <coughs> that means whenever I'm open a file is open I run this command um, which is called build on this active file. So active file is the file is open. Going back here, um, so we are saying when I want to execute this command, um, run g++ dash std c++, and then the name of the file that is open is this variable. Uh, Visual Studio Code evaluates and resolves this to the file that is currently open, this c++ file in this case. And then dash g dash o, the output should go in the this variable results to the directory of the file that is currently open and this is the name of the file with, without extension basically all we're saying is to rather than typing this manually we are having um, visual studio code do this and use any file that is open to resolve to this fib.cpp and then fib will resolve to this one all right so now the other file that uh, i want to show you guys is called launch.json so this is what happens when you actually push f5 once you push f5 um, one of these configurations that we just saw on the left side if you remember we chose code lldb in this case now this matches this configuration um, that means i want to debug based on these settings which basically tells you uh, tells visual studio code to use the extension that we just uh, installed code lldb before running this, run the build active file that I just showed you in task.json. So every time we run, it's going to be a new, um, fresh executable. And then uh, once the build is done, run this program for debugging. And that's all it is. So this one is another configuration um, which uses another LLDB um, for debugging. Um, for the purposes of watching variables without any problems, um, I've tested this one and it works perfectly fine. So you guys are welcome to use this one. And if you want, experiment with this one too. All right, so now let's go back to the next topic, which is debugging using Bazel. All right, so <clears throat> in order to build and debug using Bazel, um, again, you can download it from my GitHub. Uh, cpp template i will put this one also in the description once you download this you get uh, a directory structure where all your source files are under source um, and then you have gtest files here and then you have build files to build your um, programs now again i have set up this um, task.json here <coughs> to do your builds automatically as soon as you push f5 so basically it calls bazel build uh, with c 11 features and um, these variables would be relative file name and then this is the build file dicey.debug so basically normally we type bazel build and then this option and then uh, we do source main colon main this is what we normally call for building Bazel, um, building with Bazel, uh, based on our build file, uh, which is, in this case, it has two targets. So now I'm building this one. 
And then there are some options for uh, enabling debugging, namely dicedbg. Uh, so I have to add this. This basically, again, enables uh, the symbols for debugging inside your executable. There are more information so the debugger can use to set up breakpoints and do watches and stuff. All right, so now I can either call run this And then you can see the, the file is being built. Or rather than uh, typing this in my terminal, I can just I can just um, open this file and hit F5 on it. So again, Bazel build is running, and I get my debug window. Now I didn't have a breakpoint, so let's put a breakpoint here, and then call F5 again. Great. So now I get my breakpoint. I get uh, I stop at the first breakpoint. And you can see I'm again using the code LLDB. Now code LLDB um, and installing this and setting this up for Bazel is a little bit tricky. Um, and then you may want to try, I put some instructions on how to do this, especially in Mac, is this is a little bit tricky. Um, so make sure you go over these instructions, uh, debugging with Bazel on my, um, on my GitHub readme file. Um, hopefully it works for you. I'm not going to go over the details, um, but nevertheless, once you follow this, and then feel free to ask me questions if it didn't work for you. Basically, you need to do some setups in your launch file. And then the task.json in this case, you don't need to change at all. So task.json is fine in your launch.json, um, especially in the part that it says source map here. Uh, you need to run a command based on these instructions that I put here um, and get this and modify this section up to two underscores main. Once you do this uh, successfully, hopefully debugging works for you and you be able to use uh, code LLDB configuration and then the breakpoints will work for you. Unless you set this correctly, breakpoints will not work for you in Bazel. Anyway, so once you do this now, um, I can run this line by line i can see my variables nicely here it and showing the variables like this is has a, a name they call it pretty print basically pretty print is where you can see each, uh, each elements of a container uh, nicely like this now let's go over the uh, a few items here so we saw how to do a line breakpoint just pushing this button here the shortcut for it is also f9 um, the other thing you can do is to set a functional breakpoint. So I'm talking about functional breakpoint now. Uh, basically, all I, I want to say is that as soon as a function name in this name, in this case, main or this function got executed, I want the execution to stop and let me do debugging. So you go here, um, right click and do, actually not right click, you just do your command palette so go to your command palette on mac is shift uh, um, option sorry shift command p and then you click on uh, function breakpoint so once you do function breakpoint you get this guy here under your breakpoints and you can type the name of the function that you want to stop at all right so i, I put a breakpoint means function so whenever my execution hits a function that is called main i get I stop and then I can debug it. So let's run this again, push F5. I expect to stop at the beginning of main. And as you can see, the execution stops here. I don't have a line breakpoint here anymore. Uh, my functional breakpoint is working. All right, so now I can go over this, print them one by one, see my variables correctly. <clears throat> and um, I can do the execution correctly here. now. Another thing I want to show you guys is, so this is calculating the uh, in a loop for every node here, and then uh, puts, uh, creates another vector, puts the Fibonacci, sorry, creates the map for the Fibonacci of each of these guys in the map, and then prints it. Now, let's say I want to debug something in this loop, but I don't want to, let's say I add a breakpoint here. Um, now, when you restart this, you will get, you will stop here. And let me get rid of this functional breakpoint now. I'm gonna disable it. All right, so now 
I get, I stop here every time that I'm iterating this vector. Now, let's say I only want to debug this when I'm looking at variable seven. <clears throat> so in order to do this normally, I have to keep debugging until, um, until r becomes seven or this i becomes seven. So let's add i to my watch. This is now six. So I have to keep doing this. Let's restart this. i starts from one. i starts from one. And then I have to keep doing this line by one, line by line again and again until I get to seven. So this takes a lot of time. And let's say um, for a big vector, you want to only break here when i is let's say a thousand. So you don't want to um, manually uh, stop here for a thousand times and watch your watch window. Rather than doing this, there's something that's called, um, there's something that's called conditional breakpoint. So you can just go to your command palette again and type conditional breakpoint, this one. And then once you click this, there's a, you can have, Ask the debugger to break on an expression. Basically, I want to say when i is equal to 7, stop here. Now let's see, and then I can get rid of this break, line breakpoint, and then let's rerun this. All right, now I got stopped. The value of i is 7. I did not stop here when i was 1 or 2 or 3. And then if you can, if you look at here, this icon here means your um, conditional breakpoint, which means when i is 7. This is very useful for debugging. Um, now I'm going to go over the usage of this also in the pointers as well, but make sure you're familiar with how to use conditional breakpoints. All right, so now we also covered conditional breakpoints, we covered functional breakpoints, we covered variable watch. Let's look at call stack and see how you can use this. So for Let's see how call stack can be very useful. So let's say I want to go and add a conditional breakpoint here for when i is equal to 7 or 8. And let's get rid of this one, remove this breakpoint. OK, so now I can run this. And hopefully I get stopped here when i is equal to Let's go here, i is equal to 8. All right. Now, this fit function, I can go and see what's happening inside of it. So in order to see that, you click into this on this icon, step into. So once I click on this, I will go inside the fit function, just like that. Now, this a parameter of i is fib, we are calculating fib of 9. And this is a uh, recursive function. This is going to execute many times, right? Now, my call stack here on the left shows I started, I called main, and then I called fib, and that's where I started. Now, this fib should get executed many times, right? So let's put an, a line. We're using F9 here, maybe on this line. All right, I put a breakpoint here, and then I'm going to keep continuing my execution. Now n is 8, so for fib of 9, I'm calculating fib of 8 plus 7. So now you can see on your call stack, I called fib once, and I called fib again. So this is showing how many times I called and where my execution is in a recursive fashion, right? So now using a call stack, you can basically go back and see at this point right now, n is 8. I can go back and see what was the situation when I called it with n is equal to 9. So click on this. Now you see the situation when n was 9. Basically, it holds, it gets a snapshot of this function whenever you call it with different parameters. So now it's 9. I can go back and see what happens when it was 8. I can keep calling this recursively. So now I call it again with 7. And then I can see my call stack. I, I have three times um, fifth function is being called, which is expected for a, a recursive function. 
So let's do this one more time. I get another one. And again, I can go back and see when when was I, when n was, uh, n was 7. If you had other variables here, they will all show here with the snapshot of the time that you called it with n is equal to 7. If, you, if I switch back to when it was 9, all of your local variables, all of your watch variables that are in, in scope, you could you were able to see them uh, when you called it with n is equal to 9. So this is extremely useful when you're debugging the code that's calling multiple functions or a recursive function. So make sure you're aware of what this call stack does. All right, so I want to show you guys one more technique or one more thing when you are debugging pointers. So I have this other file as an example, pointer example that main. <clears throat> so here I'm creating a pointer um, that is getting its value from this function. It's called return invalid pointer, which does creates a pointer of a type, which is just a structure of person. It has first name, last name, and age. And uh, it creates a pointer of this, it uh, sets it to null pointer. And then after that, I set the first name to Ari or whatever you want, and then you return this afterwards. Uh, okay, so let's go back to my main. So I get this outside of this guy. And then again, I will try to set my last name here, and then I can print it. <clears throat> so let's run this and see what happens. Before doing that, I'm going to get rid of all of my breakpoints. All right, and hit F5. Okay, so now I get this really scary looking red thing here that says an exception occurred. And then we stop where the the, this exception occurred, which is one of the internal files for uh, C++. Now, we know that there was a problem here. Now, before showing you how to debug this, let me try actually running this with normal bazel command here. So bazel run source the name of the file is main colon pointer example main so i'm just running this using normal bazel and okay let me make sure i enter this correctly from my build file this thing here all right so once you run this normally you get this very beautiful and familiar segmentation fault this is a very common error that every C++ program sees it even in their um, nightmares or when they're sleeping. And that means usually means you're accessing a memory location that is not valid. So this is wh what you see when you run this program. Now, how to debug it? Let's go back to debugging this. You push F5. So now the debugger gives you this scary looking red thing here that says an exception happened in one of the internal files, in this case, string of C++. Now, how to debug this is going back to your call stack. So this is the internal std basic string or whatever. But you can see like before getting here, and I emphasize this again, you have to make sure you understand call stack and use it all the time. It's very useful. Now you go and see like this one is our own um, function. So you click on this. Now I can debug and see what's happening in this function. I can see all the local variables here and I can see what the variable of p was at the time. So let's see here. Value of p is null and we are trying to access the first name part of p when p is null. This is one of the most common things that people do in C++, most common bugs. And that's how we could catch this bug and see like I'm trying to assign a string to something that is null, and this memory location is actually invalid. So that's how you would debug exceptions. You try the debugger, basically let's do this one more time. You try the debugger, and remember I have to run the debugger in my active file, which in this case is pointer example. So I push this again here. You get to this, you hit this exception, you go back to your call stack, and then you see exactly the line that was the reason for you to get the exception. And then let's see if even your, so my watch window has the values from before. Let me get rid of them. 
me get rid of them here and then add p again so this is p is null that's why we got the exception and then let me see if i can get p first name and then see even in the watch you cannot see it because this is um it thinks this is an invalid syntax because this is null and that's how you should try and see getting most of this segmentation fault issues using the debugger it's very useful um, use your call stack and see what happened here all right that's it guys thank you so much for watching this video um, i hope you learn stuff make sure uh, to leave some comments if you have questions feel free to ask me thank you so much for watching